This is the Yarbo. It's an electric, fully autonomous yard working robot that has a snowblower attached to the front of it. This thing is kind of crazy. I've had it for several months now and I've been wanting to make a video about it for a long while. It is quite literally a miniature tank with a snowblower on the front of it that you can control with your phone or with the Xbox like controller that they send with it. So first, some context about where I live. I'm in Newfoundland, Canada, and our winters are no joke here. A few years ago, we had what was referred to as Snowmageddon, where over 90 centimeters of snow fell on top of the 100 that we already had on the ground. For my American friends, 190 centimeters is over six feet of snow. There was a state of emergency called, the Canadian military was flown in to help dig us out, and it took weeks to get things back to normal. Thankfully, this winter hasn't been nearly as bad, but we still had some pretty heavy snowfalls, and I got to try out the Yarbo in all of them. We're going to talk about how well it performed a little bit later as well as how the locals actually reacted to an autonomous snowblower driving around. But how about we talk about the features of this thing first? As you can imagine, there are some risks associated in mass producing an autonomous product with spinning blades on the front of it. So to combat that, this robot has a few different safety features that's been built in. On the front and both sides of the Yarbo, there are cameras. Each of these cameras has a little heater behind it so that no snow or ice can build up on them. And the cameras have human and animal detection so that if someone walks up to it, the robot immediately stops moving and the augers on the front shut down. It also ships with a little safety cage on the front to prevent anything from getting into that auger including heavy snow, so that was one of the first things I had to remove. The Yarbo has lights galore too. You've got two big ones up here on the front, you've got tail lights at the back, battery indicators on the sides, and a little flashing light on top that blinks when it's working autonomously. If you can't hear this thing coming, you're definitely going to see it coming. On each side of the Yarbo, there are these two antenna that help communicate with the base station, which is connected to a third antenna placed in a fixed location somewhere that has a good view of the sky. All Three of these antennas connect to satellites, so the software knows exactly where the robot is at any given time. One of the reasons that the Yarbo needs that kind of precise positioning is because it has the capability to return itself to its wireless charging dock. If it starts to snow, you can send the robot out to clear your driveway and it'll automatically return itself to the wireless charging dock and begin recharging automatically. The first time I used it like that, it kind of just blew my mind. I remember thinking, uh, yep, this is the future. <laughs> the Yarbo has an app for setting all of this stuff up. You basically choose where the docking station is, then drive the Yarbo around your driveway to manually set up the route. You can change which side to throw the snow on, how far or close you want to throw the snow, how fast you want the Yarbo to operate, and so on and so forth. There's actually a lot of settings in the app, and it can take some time to dial everything in, but that also means that you can adapt it to a lot of different situations, so that's a good thing. The app also has what are called no-go zones. These are the areas in which you don't want the Yarbo going into. Unfortunately, one of the biggest downsides to this robot is that even though it has cameras, it doesn't actually have obstacle avoidance other than when it stops for people and animals. There's a large rubberized bar up here on the front of the snowblower that acts as a buffer so that the robot doesn't damage anything when it bumps into something. And if something does come in contact with it, the robot will shut down and it won't restart until you manually move the Yarbo backwards and move the obstacle out of the way. I've been told that the team is working on obstacle avoidance for the near future, but as of right now, the robot does not have it. All right, so how good is this autonomous electric snowblower anyway? Well, much to my surprise, it is shockingly good at moving snow. When in the manual mode and controlling it via the app or with the physical controller, it can plow through snow that's taller than the snowblower itself. There are a lot of controls for this thing, but once you get the hang of it, it is pretty easy to use. There are buttons for moving the snowblower module up and down, there are buttons to change the the direction of the chute or change the angle of snow throwing. There are buttons to turn the lights on and off. There's buttons to change the speed of the auger and so on and so forth. Yes, there were times that the Yarbo got stuck in the manual mode and the tank treads were just kind of spinning, but it was easy enough to get it unstuck by raising the snowblower module up and then driving backwards. There are little metal studs that come with the Yarbo that can screw into these tank tracks to give it more traction on icy surfaces. And that was almost essential here. These studs made a huge difference. And like I said, with the studs on there, it can plow through almost anything. But that was in the manual mode. The Yarbo was designed to work autonomously. So does it blow snow just as well automatically? 
Not really. I found that in the robot's autonomous mode, it got suspended a lot more often than if I was using it manually. Granted, this happens in pretty deep snow, like more than 10 to 15 centimeters or five to six inches deep. And the whole idea of the system is for you to send it out every couple of hours so that the robot actually doesn't have to deal with that deeper snow. What happens is that when the robot thinks it's stuck, it'll back up, it'll raise the snowblower module and then drive over the hump that it wasn't able to clear. This creates a little bit of a valley that the robot can get stuck in, forcing you to kind of manually steer it out with the app or just go out and pull it out by hand. I did some testing by throwing some heavy snow onto my driveway and I think I found out the limit when working autonomously. If it's compacted wet snow like this, you do not want to go any deeper than seven or eight centimeters or around three inches. If it's newly fallen powder though, the Yarbo will just chew through it like it's nothing. It's actually kind of incredible to watch it work and it gets so much attention. Pretty much everybody that's passed by my house has jammed on the brakes to watch this thing go around. Sometimes they'll take pictures or video of it like the snowplow driver did. Speaking of plows, they do sell a plow attachment that screws onto the front of the snowblower module for pushing around wet snow, but I haven't gotten to try it out just yet. The best part about having this little robot for me is that I have a bedroom window that overlooks my driveway, so I can just hit the button for this Yarbo to start working in the app and then just watch as my autonomous snowblower clears my driveway without having to lift a shovel. Once it finishes, it even clears off its own charging pad first and then backs onto the dock to begin charging. In terms of battery life, I was pretty impressed with it. It only takes around 20 to 30 percent of the battery to clear my entire driveway, even if there's quite a bit of snow out there. The app will give you a constant readout of the battery life, but it'll also tell you how long it thinks the Yarbo will take to finish doing the job that it's currently doing. It's really cool technology, but it does have its flaws. This is very new tech, and that often comes with a lot of bugs. In the months that I've had this robot, I have had many, many bugs, ranging from the inability to set up a docking station to uh, a bug that just shifted the entire map a few feet to the left, causing the robot to attempt to clear snow that was actually on my grass. Several times, the software update caused the robot to shut down or restart without telling it to start charging again. So the next time there was a snowstorm, I couldn't use the robot at all because the battery had just completely drained on its own, even though it was still sitting on its wireless charger. I've also had some issues with Wi-Fi connectivity since the Yarbo needs a really strong connection where you set up the docking station, but that was fixed relatively easily with just a simple Wi-Fi extender. The Yarbo team has been really diligent with squashing all of those bugs and helping me fix any problems that came up, but there were definitely some times where I was frustrated enough to just pull out the manual shovel and do the job by hand. This is new tech, so you kind of have to have the patience to deal with it from time to time. The Yarbo is a really cool product, and it's actually fully modular. They sell a full lineup of modules to go on the front instead of this snowblower, so you can use it as a autonomous lawnmower in the summertime or uh, a leaf blower in the fall. It's also extremely expensive. The main body is something like 5,500 US dollars plus another 2,000 for the snowblower module. There is a $1,000 discount right now and some additional discounts if you bundle it with a couple of other modules, but that's still a lot of money. So that begs the question, who is this for? Well, if you have a really long driveway that takes a long time to clear, sure, this could fit into your life pretty well. But I think this is especially cool for those folks that are physically unable to clear their own driveways or mow their own lawns. There's a really big case to make here for accessibility. And I think that any product that helps solve a need like that deserves some attention. I'll leave links to where you can find the Yarbo in the description below. Hope you like the video. Thanks for watching. And as always, have a great day.